Hi friends, welcome to the Shits and Gigs podcast, where we keep the vibe high, the humor gets raunchy, and things get spicy when we talk about food. I'm your host, Meg Davis, and we are here for an episode of Bath Bombs tonight. So I hope you are sitting back, relaxing, kicking those feet up, maybe pouring yourself a glass of rosé or whatever floats your boat to help you unwind for the day. And we're going to chat it up about bald eagles tonight. I had an awesome weekend. I was off from working the nutrition club, which sad to be away from my little home away from home. Shout out Elevated Nutrition at 34 New Snack Hill Road in West Greenwich, Rhode Island. Um, but it was beautiful because I got to go to the zoo with my parents and Cammie and they hadn't gone to the zoo in a bit and he just loves going and being in a stroller and seeing all the things and then definitely check out the big backyard at the Roger Williams Zoo if you have not yet and you have a little super fun outdoor natural play space and it's always a good time to see what type of curiosities he dives into every time we go because there's just so much to learn and grow from. But one of the things that I always or always comes to the forefront of my mind when I go to the zoo now is we have some bald eagles there. <clears throat> and I remember, I think it was last year, I had visited the zoo with Cami and then this boy with special needs that I used to work one-on-one -on -one with. And I found it very interesting. The woman that was working there was giving us fun facts about the eagles and everything. And they have a male and a female there. And automatically i guess maybe just my observant self realized and noticed that both eagles looked exactly the same which something i've naturally noticed and i'm sure is kind of common fact territory is that in the bird culture usually the male is much more vibrant uh, for attraction purposes when they're looking to mate and the female version of the bird is typically toned down kind of same like body shape and structure but feathers are totally different so I found it very interesting that a majestic bird like the bald eagle had no differences when it came to their mate. So then that kind of enticed me. And I asked them and I was like, I find it very interesting that the birds look the same. And she had shared that they mate for life. And they also, once they mate for life, unless their partner dies, like that's the only time they'll consider another mate. So I found that very interesting. And then I was wondering if that is maybe why it's kind of like in their DNA to not necessarily be bold and different as a male because they're not always attempting to attract a female for reproductive purposes. So like once they have their person, they're like throwing on their sweatpants and they're like good to go for life. They're no longer in the dating scene. So I don't know if we have some people that want to deep dive into that and look into it. I'm very curious to see if that's a thing. Um, but very interesting, fun facts, yet yeah, male and female eagles look exactly the same. They mate for life. And then I also found out that they lay one to three eggs a year. So that's kind of interesting, popping out kiddos um, probably less frequently than the average bird. I feel like the other birds lay a lot of eggs. Like they lay like sometimes four at a time, I believe per uh, session. I don't think I came up, that came out right, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And they mate um, for life between ages four and five. And according to research, um, their lifespan is about 20 years. However, there are cases where they've lived longer. And every time I think of a bald eagle, um, it's going to be kind of a quickie episode because every time I think of a bald eagle, I think of this parable that I heard at a training that I had gone to many years ago. And it was just so inspiring in the sense that we really need to give, our si give ourselves the chance to recognize that throughout our lifetime, there are going to be these points where you kind of hit a breaking point and like you're in that spot where you have to choose whether you're going to remain uncomfortable and unhappy in whatever is happening for you or you are going to do what it takes to make the changes and leave those old tendencies behind so you can move forward and be transformed into this up-leveled experience called like the human experience and like that's kind of what we're people I think kind of downplay like we're every single day when we wake up signing up to be a part of this human experience and at the same time we didn't really sign up for it so we're kind of just rolling with it as we move through the day to day and like we're waking up and just going through the notions of life and you come to these points like I mentioned in your life where you feel uncomfortable and you feel stuck and heavy and 
unless you make those necessary changes, like nothing changes. In order for things to change, you have to change, as the famous Jim Rohn had quoted. And yeah, this parable was just so powerful for me when I heard it. So I figured that would be a fun transition from my pondering thoughts at the zoo about the bald eagles um, to share with all of you guys tonight and hopefully it hits home for some of you guys. And if it does, I would love for you to comment below and share your thoughts. All right, so um, again, this is a completely mythical parable. Like I just mentioned, it's fact that eagles live on estimate about 20 years. However, you'll hear that this one lives about 40 and then it goes through this transformation. Um, and from what I understand, this is just a fun story and parable that kind of leans into inspiring personal growth and transformation. All right, guys, listen up and lean back, like I mentioned, and let's see what this parable does for your life. It was super impactful for me at the time when I really needed to hear it. All right, the tale of an eagle's mythical rebirth at 40. Once a majestic eagle reached the age of 40 and realized that its life was nearing its end, feeling the weight of age upon its wings, the eagle decided it was time to undergo a radical transformation. It ascended to the top of the highest mountain, seeking solitude and seclusion. There, the eagle found a hidden sanctuary where it could be alone away from the world and commence the process of rebirth. The eagle began to pluck out its old and worn feathers one by one. It was a painful process, but the eagle pers persevered, knowing that it was necessary for its metamorphosis. As the old feathers fell away, the eagle's beak and talons also began to shed. The eagle was no longer recognizable in its former form. After shedding its old feathers, beak, and talons, the eagle waited patiently for new ones to grow. It was a time of darkness and uncertainty, but the eagle remained resolute in its determination to be reborn. Finally, after a period of waiting, the eagle felt a new strength coursing through its body. New feathers began, began to emerge, sleek and strong. Its beak and talons also grew back, sharper and more powerful than ever before. At last, the eagle was reborn. It had shed its old, worn-out self and emerged as a new and revitalized being. With its newfound strength and vitality, the eagle took to the skies once more, soaring higher and farther than it ever had before. So nice. It just... I love that story because it just, again, highlights how you're always going to reach points in your life where that uncomfortable change is necessary. And unless you take that time to pour into yourself and give you that, give yourself that privacy and that intimacy and self-care that is needed in order to groom, heal, and nourish whatever that change is kind of like bringing up in your soul. And unless you're releasing those old tendencies and ugly habits and things of that nature that are not benefiting you, you're not going to go nowhere. But if you choose to do it and you persevere through the tough times and the change, it's truly incredible to see who you become on the other side of that. So to conclude, the life lessons that the story really embraces is first embracing change. Change is inevitable. It's a part of life and it often leads to growth and transformation. So what are you doing to embrace change? Personal growth and renewal. Embracing change and viewing it as an opportunity for growth is essential for that personal development and changes that lead to those life-changing transformations. Overcoming challenges. The story of the Eagle's Rebirth can be a reminder that no matter how crazy life gets, we have the ability and capacity to rise above, rise above our circumstance and emerge a stronger and more beautiful being. So what are you doing and how are you caring for yourself when it comes to over, overcoming challenges? Continuous improvement. No one's perfect. There is always something to be improved and not necessarily, and I, I don't love that wording because we're not striving for perfection here. We're just here doing our best. So, but like in what ways could you improve either for yourself or those around you? And then redefining goals and priorities. Often um, many of us go through, especially like that midlife crisis that everyone talks about. When you feel like you're in these pivot points in life, 
what are you doing to reevaluate your goals and priorities? Like, are you giving yourself that time every once in a while? I highly recommend at least once a year, if not multiple times a year, taking a step back, taking inventory, like what feels good in your life? What feels stuck and heavy? And what are things that can change to make that stuck and heavy either be non-existent or just be like a little bit better? Like what are some simple things that you can implement to change the direct, change the trajectory of what your human experience is right in this moment. So kind of deep stuff, kind of fun stuff, little factoids on eagles, nothing crazy. But again, just use this parable as a reminder that we have the capacity to rise above all challenges, truly embrace change and become our best selves. YOLO people, you only have one rotation or not one rotation around the sun. We do that all the time. Oh my gosh. Let me try again. You only got one life in this skin suit that you've been gifted. So how are you choosing to experience it? Let's wrap this short and sweet little episode up with our mocktail. I kept it kind of basic today. I'm going sweet and cozy because the cooler mornings have hit and I'm all about hot tea, especially on the chilly mornings. So we're gonna go with a basic sweet ginger and mandarin vibe. If you take half a teaspoon of the Herbalife sweet ginger tea and you pair that with two, three capfuls of the mandarin aloe, it is a super yummy, kind of just warm and cozy with a little hint of sweet vibe for you to ease into your day. Fun fact also that I was chatting to a couple people at the club with today. Um, there has been a lot of studies recently that show benefit in holding off on your caffeine in the morning. And one of the reasons why is that I guess early caffeine consumption, especially that from coffee, essentially just turns off the like little switch in your brain that tells you you're tired. So that's kind of why with coffee, especially you feel really heightened and energized and then you kind of have that crash because the second that coffee wears off, like your body is still waking up essentially. And this is something I actually have recently embraced, probably within the last couple months. Um, I've been holding off on my caffeine boost till either the afternoon or um, just later on in the morning. And what I've been doing instead is having a tall glass of water when I first wake up, and then I'll have some type of hot beverage um, that's non-caffeinated. I'll either do um, my strawberry lemonade collagen or my aloe with water. And then I've been adding in a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar because that has its own host of benefits and my body just really reacts well to apple cider vinegar. I always feel so great and deep loaded and just good vibes with the apple cider vinegar when it comes to my body. Um, and then, like I said, I'll hold off till the caffeine, probably till at least like 10 a.m. at the very earliest, I would say, is where I'm trending at, or like lunchtime. So feeling super naturally energized with doing that. So that's a pretty cool thing to consider if you feel like you're overdoing it with your caffeine and you're starting like right from the get-go in your day. See how drinking a glass of water or having like a hot non-caffeinated non beverage first thing and holding off a bit on your caffeine and see how like your energy fluctuates and see if that's maybe a power move for you. So thanks again for tuning in tonight, guys. Hope this was helpful for both your well-being and your mindset. Toodles.